1850, Joseph Swan began work on an invention that would change the lives of millions across the world, the electric lamp. For more than a century, its technology and design has remained largely unchanged. But Professor Sir Colin Humphrey's research group at the University of Cambridge's Department of Materials Science and Metallurgy has been investigating the power of a remarkable material called gallium nitride to produce a new form of lighting based on light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. Collaborating with UK company Plessy, Sir Colin's research could revolutionise the world's lighting market and save billions in energy costs. In the UK, 20% of all the electricity we use is for lighting. If we use LEDs, then we can save at least 50% of this, so we only use 10% of the electricity for lighting. Saving 10% of electricity, this means £2 billion per year electricity savings. It's just huge. Uh, we could close in the UK eight large power stations or not build eight new power stations. In the world, we could save over 600 power stations globally, or not build 600 new power stations. So the energy savings are remarkable. Concerning carbon dioxide emissions from power stations, we could save at least 10% of all the carbon dioxide emitted by power stations by using LED lighting. So a major contribution to saving carbon emissions. LEDs now are expensive because they're grown on two inch diameter sapphire material, and sapphire is very expensive. What we've done is develop a growth method for growing on six inch diameter silicon. So this is a silicon six inch diameter wafer. It looks a bit like a compact disc. And we grow our gallium nitride LEDs on this. We can grow 100,000 LEDs on a single six inch wafer. And this is bringing the cost down remarkably. So I think this will bring the cost down from 15 pounds to about three pounds for a replacement light bulb. LEDs work by passing a tiny electric current through the indium gallium nitride. And this tiny electric current excites particles in the material, and these are called electrons and holes. And uh, to get the light out, these electrons and holes just recombine and give you light. But to get brilliant light out, we need to make sure the electrons and holes are easily recombining, so we confine them in what's called a quantum well. This is a very thin layer, just 10 atoms thick. It's actually, it's 20,000 times thinner than a human hair, so it's really a very thin layer. And uh, you're squashing up the electrons and holes so they easily make contact and then they give out light. An analogy is thinking of people in a room. If you have men and women in a large room, then they tend to stand a bit apart and they don't really make close contact. If you force them into a tiny room, then they have to be in really close contact and then they make contact and they can react with each other. In this narrow quantum well, it's a bit like quantum speed dating. And so this is what we do with the electrons and holes, when they're really close together, they react and they produce this brilliant light. To see what we've grown, we have to have an instrument which can resolve single atoms because we're looking at things at atomic resolution. And so we're using a Titan electron microscope which has atomic resolution so we can actually see the individual atoms in the material. And what we do, we look at these quantum wells and the quantum wells often have surface steps on them which you can see in these electron micrographs. And these surface steps are important. They actually help the, um, help the emission of light. They actually make it stronger. And so we also look for non-uniformities in the indium gallium nitride. We want a uniform composition of indium gallium nitride. In the electron microscope, we can do an analysis. We can not only image the individual atoms, we can analyze them and say what they are atom by atom. So this electron microscope is a remarkable instrument, and the pictures we take are just amazing pictures. How do we reduce gallium nitride LEDs? Well, we grow them atomic layer by atomic layer in a special growth reactor. And what happens in this reactor, if you think of a, having a shower at home, in a shower at home, water comes through a lot of individual nozzles. It's called a shower head. Well, this reactor is called a shower head reactor. Half the holes in a shower head have a gas containing gallium. The other half have a gas containing nitrogen. It's actually ammonia gas. And the gallium gas is gallium trimethyl. And these pass through the separate shower head holes, so they don't react on their way down. And then they hit the six inch silicon wafer, which is at a thousand degrees centigrade. When they hit the wafer, the gases just decompose at this high temperature and gallium and nitrogen skid around on the surface of the silicon and they recombine to form gallium nitride. Then we just grow gallium nitride layer by layer. Then we add some indium to make the quantum wells. It's a bit like making a layer cake and that's what we're doing. The rate of growth is the speed at which grass grows. So it's very slow. It takes about six hours to build a complete 
gallium nitride LED structure on this six inch silicon wafer. In February 2012, Plymouth-based company and Humphrey's long-term collaborators, Plessy, acquired the intellectual property for the new LED. Scientists from Professor Humphrey's research group transferred the technology from a single six-inch research reactor to a commercial growth reactor capable of growing gallium nitride on seven six-inch silicon wafers simultaneously. This crucial expansion step to industrial scale production is often problematic, but remarkably was accomplished in only three weeks, enabling Plessy to begin full-scale production of gallium nitride LEDs early in 2014. Plessy are now the first manufacturers of LEDs in the UK ever, and the first manufacturer of gallium nitride LEDs on a six-inch silicon in the world against major international competition. And the local impact of this collaboration and Plessy's expansion means significantly more employment for the whole Plymouth area. So Plessy was relaunched with the acquisition of the original Plessy Semiconductor Manufacturing Center in Swindon in May 2009. We subsequently bought uh, this facility here in Plymouth in January 2010 and relaunched the brand, uh, refreshed and relaunched, and are working towards building Plessy back up before it was dissolved in the, in the mid to late 1980s with the help of the University of Cambridge. Um, globally, LEDs tend to use a base technology based on sapphire and silicon carbide. The innovative work of Collins Group has been to grow the active um, materials, gallium nitride, on silicon wafers. Uh, we are, by tradition, a silicon foundry. Silicon is a very well understood and well known material in the semiconductor industry and it is a lot cheaper. It scales larger to larger wafer sizes to actually grow the materials and create the devices and that is a real competitive edge uh, over the competition. We've been working with Cambridge University now for about 10 years and certainly the, the, the IP we acquired two years ago is fundamental to Plessy's future. Um, our growth um, is, is driven by our LED rollout program, our development, and the support we get from Cambridge is absolutely crucial to us in delivering the commercial viability that we see as being important to both Plymouth and the university and the area around here too. We see the city's economy really starting to gather strength now, and although the recession was a difficult time for us, We've actually weathered that storm much more successfully than many other cities in the country. We are the 15th largest city in, in the United Kingdom. And Plessy will play an important role in terms of how we continue to grow, um, not just in the sense of job numbers, but I think they also provide um, the type of work that can be a real aspiration for the young people of the city. We still have too many young people who are out of work. Some of them are not actually quite sure what career path they'd like to go down and what Plessy provides is a real exemplar type operation that people think, yes, I want to work in that sort of industry. It's really good. Um, well, we're looking to continue our collaboration, which is very strong, effectively through an IP pipeline. So as Colin takes the technology to, to different levels, we will look to exploit that within commercial products. Um, so taking the GAN on silicon technology further and, and to another level. Well, this exploitation of our research by Plessy has been made possible by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, which has been funding my work on gallium nitride since about 1995. And um, to start with, they sponsored our work on sapphire and then more recently our growth on silicon. And uh, because they put continuous funding in, I was really keen to exploit this work in the UK. So we were approached by companies from Japan and America and China, all wanting to take over our research ideas. But we decided to go with Plessy so we could really exploit this in the UK. The applications of gallium nitride are not limited to very low energy material for light emission. It's also a very low energy material used in electronics and transistors. All mobile phones and computers contain paraelectric materials made from silicon. Further investigation by Sir Collins Group has shown that devices made from gallium nitride are 40% more efficient and, if adopted in our electronic devices, could save the UK another 10% of its electricity. 
and the potential uses of this technology extend way beyond energy savings. Sir Collins Group is exploring how gallium nitride LEDs can transform technology across several disciplines. They could save millions of lives by purifying water using extreme ultraviolet LEDs in the developed and developing world. They could save the lives of cancer patients by helping to target X-ray beams during radiotherapy. They could be used for the next generation of wireless communications using Li-Fi and for understanding how our brain works by mapping and stimulating individual neurons. So gallium nitride is really a wonder material which is going to make a remarkable contribution to society for decades to come.